I've had a lot of questions about how I overwinter my peppers. If you're new to my channel, I have a very short, warm growing season and I have about six and a half months of the year where I have to protect my pepper plants. And so I like to put these in my garage and I do that um, through about from October until about May. And um, this is because uh, we experience a lot of freezing temperatures during this time. So I briefly touched on this during my pepper growing video. Now I'm able to use my garage because I have a little bit of sunlight in there. But for those of you who might not have um, a garage or a small room where you have light, you can also buy supplemental artificial light and I recommend the LED grow lights. I hope to be reviewing one of these over the next year to kind of let you know how they work out. So um, you can, they come in all different price ranges. So basically what I'm going to do today is walk through my container garden. I have many, many pepper plants growing here. I'll include a link for all of the harvest that I've done this year for you if you've missed that. So first I want to show you how I prepare the garage area that's right in front of my windows. And I like to put down um, some kind of board and, or a cloth, also a tarp. This way it protects the um, cold concrete from the containers. We want to make sure the soil doesn't freeze because this will kill the pepper plants, okay? So um, I just put this down in front of the windows. Now my windows get light all day long in this particular side of my house. It's like a southeast facing window. So basically, even if you're moving this into a greenhouse or something, make sure you put down some kind of barrier in between your containers and the ground or the concrete, okay? So now all I wanna do is just walk through my containers here and kind of take a close look at my pepper plants and determine which ones I want to keep for the winter. And um, this is my pimento plant and it's not really been healthy this year, so I'm not going to keep it. I'll go ahead and harvest what I can off of it. So I don't really have enough room in my garage to keep many plants. I'd like to, um, let's say, keep about six, maybe seven plants, and that's really more than I want. I will expect maybe four to five of those to survive, um, just because of the nature of just putting it into a garage. It doesn't really get a lot of sunlight. So um, anyway, so this one I will not keep, and I'll go ahead and remove the little cage I had on here, and I'll go ahead and dispose of the soil. I won't reuse this soil. Is because it looks like either the plant had a virus or something or possibly a nutrition deficiency, but I'm not sure which one, so I don't want to reuse the soil. Also, it's important to make sure to keep your tools clean, so in case your plants do have some type of virus, um, you will not be spreading it over to your healthy plants, okay? You'll wanna just make sure you keep them wiped down with alcohol or some type of diluted bleach. So this is my golden cayenne pepper, and it has not really done well this year, but that was because of the hornworm I found on here last week that I showed y'all. And um, I've taken it off, and it started to improve a little bit, so I'm going to try to keep this, and I am just going to go ahead and spray it with an insecticide, the top side of the leaves and the underside. I want to go ahead and also remove the bin underneath. Now, um, I am using a spinosad, and this is one of my favorite uh, insecticides to use, but there are several different things that you can use. I'll leave a link to this um, little article here for you below the video if you'd like to check it out. And um, just because I'm using spinosad, that doesn't mean that any problem you're having with insects, spinosad will work on it. This will show you specific insects and how to target those with different insecticides, which are a little bit less toxic to the environment, okay? So you can check that out if you want to use something um, to spray your plants with. But I do recommend to try to go ahead and start getting rid of any insects if you're planning on moving these indoors. <laughs> because you, even though I'm just putting this in my garage and it's not going to be in my living room or in front of a sunny room in my living space, um, I still don't want to have insects infecting the plants because once one insect gets on one plant, they quickly infest the other plants and then they will all die. So um, we wanna make sure we nip it in the bud. So I removed the bin underneath it because I really want to try to uh, let these dry out a little bit. 
I also went ahead and fed it just a little bit of water soluble fertilizer and I'll just put it in front of the garage so that I know that this is a plant I'm keeping and I'll move it in there soon. This is a red Caribbean habanero and I like this little uh, habanero so I want to try to keep it even though it's not been the healthiest plant this year. This one's actually two years old so if it survives this winter again then it will be a three-year-old plant for me. So um, I am just going to go ahead and harvest what I can. Now I'll show you one problem I've had with the pepper plants this year. There's been some kind of mite or spider mite infestation on here, almost all of my plants. And so I'm going to look closely at my plants and remove any nesting areas. Um, a lot of times these little insects will set up little areas where they'll nest. And so I want to make sure I remove those. So I'm not really pruning it. I don't prune my pepper plants before I move them indoors, but I do want to kind of free them up of anything that might give them stress uh, over the next six and a half months. So I'll also remove any debris or weeds at the base of the plant. So I'll also go ahead and spray this one as well. And this will be the second time I've sprayed it. I sprayed it uh, about two weeks ago. So I'm just continually spraying um, until I can move them inside the garage. This is because they, uh, the insects, you know, they lay eggs, so we want to make sure to get any hatching insects as well. And I'll feed it just a tiny bit of water-soluble fertilizer. I just want to give it a little boost before it goes through a long dormant stage. So this is a pepper plant called a Havasu, and it was a hybrid that I picked up at one of the little box stores. It's been a pretty good producer for me. I'm not real crazy about the uh, plant. It looks like it might be showing some signs of disease. So I'm not going to keep this one. And so I went ahead and cut it down. I'm going to move the tomato cage. I'm going to dispose of the soil. And I wanted to show you the tomato cage. I've turned these upside down and I turn over the top so it won't be such a hazard of poking your eye out or something. <laughs> so in that one goes. And so this is the jalapeno pepper plant, and um, it's been doing real well for me this year. I've enjoyed it a lot, so I'm going to try to keep this one. So I'll go ahead and remove a lot of the fruit on here. Also, at this time, I'm looking for insects, uh, nesting areas, curled leaves. Curled leaves are always usually a sign that, that there is an insect nesting inside. So um, always pull off curled leaves and dispose of those. Now all these things that I'm throwing away here, these will not go into my compost. I don't know what the problem is with some of these plants, so I don't want to introduce any kind of viruses into my compost. So I will just find a place to put those. And again, I'll go ahead and spray this. I'm not going to remove the cage on here or the bin underneath because this plant does need some support. However, I'll go ahead and give it just a little drink of some water-soluble fertilizer. Now this is a jalapeno plant that has survived um, two years and it's actually starting to look a little bit more healthy than it has all season, but I'm not going to keep it either. Um, I was pretty impressed with this plant though. It's a jalapeno uh, pepper plant and the peppers stayed green very uh, just for a very short time before they turned red. They went almost from uh, green straight into red. And so that guess is because of the age of the plant. Now this is my Tabasco plant. I don't think I'm going to keep it. I, need, I do need to harvest it right now, but um, I don't think I'm going to have room for this one. And then my Thai yellow pepper plant. It's uh, been a pretty good plant this year. I would love for this one to survive over the winter, so I'm going to go ahead and try to keep this one as well. And I just want to go ahead and remove the yellowing leaves. Anything that I can try to get off of the plants before I move them into the garage is going to help them because they aren't going to have a lot of strength, you know, because there's not going to, there's not going to be a lot of sunlight. I'm not going to be feeding them a lot. So I want to try to remove anything that's going to stress them out. And it looks like there's... Um, a nesting area on here so I want to go ahead and remove that uh, I will go ahead also and water this plant it's still putting out some fruit I'm not going to harvest the um, green peppers yet I think I can har harvest these next month in November they'll be yellow here soon so this one I'll continue to let grow a little bit before I do the final harvest and um, I'm going to go ahead and spray up underneath the leaves and on top and this is the Thai red pepper um, it is putting out blooms right now and I don't want that right now in the season it's just too late 
uh, too close to the time where I want it to go dormant. So I'll just go ahead and remove all of the blooms. And keep in mind, I am just putting my peppers into a dormant stage. I'm not putting them into an area where I want them to continue to live and produce. So um, I would leave the blooms on there. Let's say if I was moving them into maybe a sunny room in my home where it was nice and warm, around 75 degrees or something like that. Um, so I'll go ahead and water it and give it a little bit of fertilizer. And this is my habanero plant that is, um, this is its second year. So I almost decided not to keep this because it has a pretty bad infestation of whatever that spider mite is or whatever's been in the plants here late in the season. Uh, whatever it is, it has not really affected the production of my pepper plants. They've just been kind of a nuisance. So I think I'm just going to cut this plant back and hopefully it will live. <laughs> we'll see. This is going to be my experiment. So here are the things that I just showed you. You can pause this and uh, review it if you want to. This is just to kind of recap what I do. And again, I'm going to just say this is for uh, to put the peppers in kind of a dormant stage. So um, this is what I ended up with. I got rid of probably at least half of my pepper plants. And again, I won't be putting that in a compost pile. Now I need to clean up all of my pots and my bins. Um, I'll clean them with bleach in this little wading pool. Okay, and so here's what's going to go into my garage. I ended up with six pepper plants and then the one habanero, which I plan to just do as an experiment. And then this is the pepper harvest. And then I still have to move in the subtropical container garden into the garage as well. So at this point, I'm just going to watch the weather forecast. And if it looks like it's going to get down to freezing, all of my pepper plants will get moved into the garage. As a matter of fact, if it starts to get into the high 30s, I'll move them into the garage. My garage stays around 50 degrees Fahrenheit in the winter. And I have to move these pretty much um, every month to make sure that they stay in the rays of the sunlight which comes through that window because that sunlight angle changes throughout the winter. Sometimes I'll have to move them closer to the door and sometimes I can move them back from the door. And so I just like to um, feed them just a tiny bit in the winter, maybe once in the middle of the winter. And I don't water them much at all. Okay, I really try not to water them. I just don't want the soil to get wet, but I'll try to keep it moist. And if you have not yet seen my other How to Grow videos, I'll leave a link here for you. And um, if you enjoyed the video, you can head down there and give me a big thumbs up. Let me know that you liked it. Also, if you haven't already, feel free to go ahead and hit that subscribe button and hit the wheel to the right and you'll receive all notifications from my channel. So thanks so much for watching and y'all have a beautiful day.